Hello everyone, uh, my name is Ankur Srivastava and I am a faculty member in the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department with a joint appointment with the Institute for Systems Research. I started in Maryland in the year 2002, before which I was a graduate student at uh, the University of California in Los Angeles, UCLA, uh, where I got a PhD in the year 2002. And I, before that, I was at the Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi, where I got my bachelor's in the year 1998. Broadly speaking, my area of interest is computer engineering, but more specifically in computer engineering, we are trying to look at uh, design methodologies, design schemes, and design tools for making computer systems more efficient, uh, low power, low energy, high performance, more reliable and secure. Today we are able to fit more than a billion to almost two billion devices on, on silicon and this primarily has resulted in improved functionality and, and improved computational power. Moving forward, uh, we are going to have significant challenges in our continued ability to fit more and more transistors. I mean, today's technology, uh, in today's te technology, uh, a, a transistor is in the range of 22 nanometers. I mean, that's the state of the art. 11 nanometers we should be able to do, 5 nanometers maybe, but after that we really don't know. And this has always been an issue. We have always had uncertainty regarding whether we, we, we will be able to uh, keep up with, with our need for and our desire for having smaller and smaller devices and we've always overcome those challenges but moving forward this seems a little unattainable after a few technology generations because we are really reaching the limits of physics so what we'd like to be able to do is is to continue to improve computing performance continue to improve functionality even if we are not able to have devices which are um, um, fabricated at much, much smaller dimensions than what we have today, or devices that are completely reliable and fun function correctly all the time, and so on and so forth. So, uh, in order to attain this, this, this goal, in order to overcome this challenge, uh, my students and I, in our group, we are looking at two uh, uh, design philosophies, two philosophies, two approaches. One of them we call as co-design and the other we call as adaptability. Now co-design as, as a design principle essentially, it's, 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 it's a very simple principle. It essentially says that we are going to look at different aspects of, of the computer system or any system and then we're going to design them together. One approach is to go in the third dimension where we're going to take these 2D chips, uh, which is what most of our chips are today, and then we're going to stack them in the third dimension. Uh, when you do that, then you can significantly improve the computational density, computational performance, because you have much higher availability of transistors, and that results in much better functionality. But this 3D technology comes with, m with many, many challenges too. One very important challenge is that of heat dissipation. Now, if a, a modern processor dissipates anything between 80 to 100 watts of power, imagine if you had five of, of those stacked together, then your um, processor configuration is dissipating around half a kilowatt of power in the same one centimeter square meter of area. And that means significantly higher heat densities. And this high heat density results in reliability loss, lifetime loss, and so on and so forth. So one approach that we are trying to, to investigate in our group is to investigate more sophisticated cooling, methodolo cooling technologies such as uh, fluidic uh, microchannels or, or, or thermoelectric cooling and, and such and to integrate them uh, or come up with design tools and design methods that, that enable integration of these technologies into this, this 3D stack. But the approach that we are trying to develop does not design the 3D IC separately and then think of the cooling solution later, which is what the state of the art really does. What we are saying is that these two things should be done together. I mean, that's what co-design is. And when you do that, then you'll be able to get much better performance, much better efficiency at much, much lesser costs. And we have papers to illustrate that this is indeed true. And, uh, and some of our results indeed, indeed indicate that you can actually get a factor of 5 to a factor of 10 improvement in overall efficiency of the system uh, when you do co-design. Another um, issue moving forward would be the fact that as you make your devices smaller and smaller, say you are able to ma manufacture devices less than 5 nanometers. Most certainly, because you are fabricating at such small dimensions, you will not be able to fabricate with high degree of reliability and these devices would be prone to failure, not just immediately after manufacturing, but also during use, also during runtime. And that, that is going to be a huge problem for, for guaranteeing reliable computational performance of the computer system. Uh, so far, what a computer architect or, or somebody who writes code uh, software assumes is that they have a contract with, with the device people and with the fabrication people that they will be providing 
uh, reliable devices that is going to run their, uh, implement their architecture or run their software with 100% accuracy. Now moving forward, this, this contract will not be valid to the extent it has been valid so far. So you would have to make computer systems work with devices which are fundamentally unreliable. Now, one approach, one significant approach that would allow us to do that is, is by making the computer systems adaptable, making the computer systems smart so that they are able to sense their own state by having some kind of sensing mechanism. Just like uh, we all have an immunity system that allows us to sense our own state, um, without us really doing, thinking about it, it is always happening in the background. And then perform corrections that ensure reliable operation, that ensure high performance operation, even if the environmental conditions change, even if the, the, the reliability of few devices becomes questionable, the processor is able to uh, reconfigure itself and get back uh, to, uh, to its feet and continue reliable operation and, high, uh, and efficient operation to the extent possible. Now, in order to do that, you need a very sophisticated way to sense the state of, of the processor. So you need some sort of sensing mechanism at transistor level, at, at device level. And then you need these correction uh, and control mechanisms um, or knobs that, that, that enable reliable operation from the information that is coming from the sensors. And then you need these algorithms and, 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 and control techniques, feedback control techniques that, 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 uh, that guarantee that the information is being put to, put to optimal use. So uh, these are the, are the two, co-design and adaptability are the two uh, uh, important um, focuses of, of, my, uh, of my research group. So in conclusion, uh, the notion of co-design and adaptability most certainly will, will uh, play a huge role in, in the design and use of computer systems in the years to come. Uh, most certainly the, the challenges uh, in our way to our continued scaling, to our continued improvements in computing performance are many and they are very, very significant as well. But by use of methods such as co-design and adaptability, I'm very confident that we will be able to overcome those challenges. And, and uh, while computing has had a huge impact on our day-to-day -day lives in the last few decades, the best really is yet to come.